Hello everybody, it's me Shelby back again for the next chapter of Stick Dog. Today we are reading chapter 7 which is called Bite, Drive, Dive, and Fly. Well, I was thinking that there are four human creatures and five of us, so numbers work out to our advantage, began Mutt. Stripes, Poo Poo, Karen, and I each chose a human. Then, on the count of three, we run across the field and bite the ankles of each human. While they're screaming in pain, Stick Dog grabs all the hamburgers off the grill and brings them back to this pipe for us to eat. Um, okay, said Stick Dog, that's one plan. Does anybody have a plan that doesn't involve biting people and me burning my paws off on a flaming barbecue grill? You don't like my plan, Mutt asked, a little depressed. Oh, that's not it at all, said Stick Dog. It's a great plan. Let's just see if we can come up with an even greater plan. This made Mutt feel better. I think I have an idea, Poo Poo volunteered. Is that a car over there? It must be theirs. It's the only one in the parking lot. What if I snatch the keys from the mom's bag? It's right there on the bench by the picnic table. Then I hop into the car and drive away. I won't steal it or anything. You know, just drive it a few blocks. The whole family of humans will chase me. While they're chasing me, you guys can get the hamburgers and take them back to Stick Dog's pipe. Just save some for me, okay? Suddenly, Mutt interrupted with a great deal of excitement. Poo poo, he said, hopping up and down. Can I ride in the passenger seat and then be rolled down the window? I can stick my head out while you're driving. Is that okay? There's nothing like sticking your head out of a window, man. And all the smells are different. And sometimes you see other dogs on the sidewalk and you can bark your head off until there's wind in your ears and your fur. It's a blast. I mean, an absolute blast. Please let me, please let me, please, please, please. How do you know so much about riding in the car, Matt? Half stripes. I used to go on my human's mail route with him every Saturday. His name was Gary. He let me hang my head out of the window. You lived with a mailman? asked Karen, shocked. I bark at mailmen all the time. Maybe I barked at this Gary human. I doubt it, Mutt lowered his voice. That was a long, long way from here. Will it bother you if we bark at mailmen? I mean, seeing as you used to have a human mailman of your own? Mutt shook his head and smiled. No, in fact, I used to bark at Gary all the time. You did, Google asked? You barked at your own human? Um, yeah, I'm a dog. And he was a mailman. What choice did I have? Mutt said clearly regarding this question as ridiculous. All of the other dogs agreed that this made perfectly good sense. Mutt returned to his original thought. So, Poo Poo, can I ride the car during your most excellent plan? Well, said Poo Poo, I was really planning on helping you with the hamburgers while I drive the car myself. Come on, man, Mutt begged. It was obvious that he would do just about anything to ride in the car and hang his head out the window. His eyes popped open really wide. I've got it. What if while I hang out the window, I act as a lookout? I can tell you when the family's chasing us down, how close we are getting, if the police are after us, if you're about to run to the telephone pole, that kind of thing. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Well, let me think about it. I just love riding in a car. It's the thing I miss most. So you have to take me, pleading Mutt. Sometimes you even get bugs in your teeth. And sometimes some of those bugs are delicious. And I don't know which ones because they fly into me like 30 miles an hour and I can't see them. And because, you know, I swallow them. You just gotta let them come with you. You just gotta let me come with you, Poo Poo. Well, okay, Poo Poo finally responded. Yes. That's when Stick Dog spoke up. One question, Poo Poo. Do you know how to drive? Poo Poo lowered his head. No. Does that mess things up? Do you think it's a bad plan? Not at all, said Stick Dog. It's just a, it's such a good plan, I think we should save it for a very desperate time. Like when we're starving even more than today and we must have some hamburgers. That's when when that happens, we'll say, remember Poo Poo's great plan from a couple of years ago? Let's use that. Oh, I see, said Poo Poo. Yes, that makes perfectly good sense. Good, I'm glad, said Stick Dog. Anybody else? Mutt sat down and moaned to himself, I really, really want to hang my head out of that car window. He mumbled, and the other dogs felt sorry for him. If we get those hamburgers, Mutt, Stick Dog said, 
I guarantee they'll taste better than the bugs that smash into your mouth when you ride in a car. This thought lifted Mood's mutt's mood immediately. That's when Karen spoke up. She said, I have a plan. Let's hear it, Stick Dog said. Karen took a deep breath with her long dash of abdomen and fleeting in front of, in front, back to, to back, and began. It may hurt a little bit, but I think it's worth it. Let's go over to the creek and climb up that tall cliff right above that really shallow part. Then we'll jump off. Karen stopped. Poo poo, but stripes and stick dog couldn't tell if that was the end of the plan or whether Karen was just taking another deep breath. Or perhaps whether she was contemplating how much it would hurt to fall off a cliff during in about three inches of water and land on a bunch of jagged rocks. Um, said stick dog. How does that get us any hamburgers? Isn't it obvious, Karen said, slightly put off. Well, yeah, but in a sort of not obvious way, maybe you could fill in some of the details for us? Oh, very well, said Karen. After we jump off the cliff into the rocks, we'll have lots of cuts and bruises, you see. Maybe even some broken bones. Won't that be wonderful? Yes, I suppose so, Sick Dog said slowly. But again, can we get to the getting the hamburgers part of the plan? Karen sighed the biggest, longest sigh a dash on could sigh. Now, between you and me, that's not very big, because you know dashums aren't very big. But for Karen, it was as if she had sucked in enough air to fill up a blimp and then let it out again. We'll go up to the family, Karen explained. She spoke very slowly and seemed sort of embarrassed for her friend's lack of smarts. They give us the hamburgers because they feel sorry for us. At this, the conclusion of Karen's plan, the stick dog, mutt, poo poo, and straps all nodded their heads as if they understood all along that throwing themselves violently and tragically off a cliff was a grand and marvelous way to get new hamburgers. Okay, said Stick Dog, let's call that Plan B. Plan B? Karen asked incredulously. Plan B? Yes, said Stick Dog, but why? Well, think about it. Plan B. B. Stick Dog explained, looking at Karen right in the eyes. B stands for beautiful, for bountiful, for bodacious, for bombastic. Brilliant? asked Karen quietly. Yes, of course, said Stick Dog. Brilliant. And at this, Karen puffed out her tiny, dashing chest with pride. Stick Dog turned and looked at Stripes, who was all too happy to have offered a plan on her own. I see that once again it is up to my keen intellect and superior brain skills to devise a strategy for our success, said Stripes. You will all listen carefully, please. I do not want to repeat this plan. A plan of this magnitude and brilliance is both effervescent and maxi-tastic. What is it, Mutt sighed. It involves a big gazebo where the humans will eat their hamburgers, began Stripes. She paced back and forth in front of the other dogs. I think we should put on a little show for the humans inside that gazebo. It will be like a theater play. We'll all act something out. Oh, I love plays and acting, screamed Poo Poo. I'm glad, continued Stripes. We're going to act out a cop and robbers kind of play. With my background in law enforcement, I can lend a real authority to the story. You used to be a police officer, asked Mutt. Stripes swelled with pride. Well, sort of. I was a guard down at the mall. Stripe turned away for a moment and lowered her voice. All that ended with the nacho cheese grande incident. What nacho cheese grande incident? I don't want to talk about it, Stripes whispered. Her whole body shivered. Okay. He was as anxious to get to the hamburger grabbing idea of going again, said Stick Dog. He was so hungry now that his little stomach was beginning to hurt. Tell us more about the cop and robbers play that you're proposing. Strex hesitated for a few seconds more to gather herself and then said, First, Karen is going to run by the gazebo a couple of times with a really good looking stick in her mouth. Second, Mutt and Poo Poo will come running up to the human and turn their heads back and forth like they're looking for something. And they cry a lot. Why do they do that? asked Mutt. You see, Karen has stolen the stick from you two and you're supposed to be very upset about it. Okay, said Stick Dog slowly. What about you and me, Stripes? Oh, uh, we're on the roof, Stripes concluded. She headed toward the gazebo. Come on, let's go, follow me, remember your parts. Poo Poo, Mutt, and Karen scurried out from behind the honeysuckle bush to follow Stripes. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute, said Stick Dog. Come back here, please. The other dog stopped and came back. Why are you and I on the roof? Stick Dog asked Stripes. Didn't I mention the part of the plan, said Stripes. I apologize, Stick Dog. I just thought it seemed so obvious I didn't think it was worth mentioning. Allow me to explain. Please do, said Stick Dog. You and I climbed onto the roof, Stripes said, and she was starting to motion with her paws, acting out as she spoke. We stacked up some garbage cans or boxes to get up there, no big deal. I find a big piece of cloth and material and quickly fashion a cape. I'm going to be looking for something in deep maroon and royal blue if I can find it. Those colors are very prominent in my color wheel at this time of year. The other dogs didn't know this meant, didn't know what this meant at all. The sick dog shot a quick look at Poo Poo, Mutt, and Karen that said, don't even think about asking without actually saying it. Stripes continued, once I get that cape on, you tie a rope around my belt. Stick dog, it's going to have to be a pretty long rope. After that, we might, we will crawl right into the edge of the gazebo roof. That's when you lower me down onto the rope until I'm hanging right in front of the hamburger eating humans. You swing me back and forth so it looks like I'm flying. My color coordinating cape is flapping in the wind behind me. It will look magnificent and then presco hamburger time. Stick Dog inhaled very deeply. Why are you wearing a cape? I'm acting, remember? I'm Super Dog. You're Super Dog? I'm Super Dog. And why are you swinging in the air? Um, so it looks like I'm flying, Stripes answered and looked at the other dogs nodding her head and smirking at Stick Dog. Of course, to look like you're flying, Stick Dog repeated. And how does this great piece of theater get us the hamburgers? Two ways. First, the family emerges from the gazebo to see Super Dog save the day, because you know how often do you see a flying dog chase down a stick stealing criminal? Not very often, especially when Super Dog is really just swinging back and forth from a rope, said Stick Dog. Right, exactly. And since they run out of the gazebo, the hamburgers will be left unguarded, said Stripes. By this time, Mutt, Poo Poo, and Karen will have to run around the back of the gazebo out of sight. They can sneak in and snatch all the hamburgers. While they're doing that, you swing me one more time and I go bashing into the family, knocking them down and giving them even more time to complete our mission. Stick Dog had no, had no more questions, but Karen had one. Do I get to keep the stick? Sure, no problem, they took stripes. Well, I think it's a terrific plan, said Stick Dog. He knew there were actually quite a few flaws in Stripes' plan, including finding a cape and a rope, climbing to the top of the roof, and getting four humans to believe that a dog swinging back and forth from a rope was really a flying canine superhero, and not, you know, a dog swinging back and forth on a rope. But Stick Dog didn't mention any of these problems. He figured that if he could just take the blame quickly and simply, then maybe they could get to those hamburgers sooner. He said, but I think I'm going to mess things up, Stripes. I'm just not strong enough to swing you back and forth like that. It's my fault that your plan won't work, and I apologize for that. Stripes looked very sad and dejected. <sighs> she said, it's okay, Sick Dog. I understand. It's a really good plan, Stripes, said Sick Dog. Stripes still looked sad. Your spots look great today, he added. They're really standing out nicely. The black spots combined with the white background really create the perfect balance between lightness and darkness. And your fur looks especially clean and soft. Did you bathe recently? Yes, I did, a matter of fact, said Stripes, just a few months ago. Well, I can certainly tell, said Sick Dog. Right, everybody? Yes, mm-hmm, oh yeah. Poo Poo, Karen, and Mutt all chimed in quickly. Stripes' tail began wagging again, and when it did, she, Poo Poo, Mutt, and Karen all gathered in a circle around Stick Dog because when it came to finding food, they knew Stick Dog had a plan. He always did. All right, thank you for tuning in to another chapter of Stick Dog. Have a good day, everybody.